Well, welcome everybody to this special edition of Race Space Spotlight. Today, we're in DGR in Mooresville, North Carolina with DGR driver, NASCAR Gander Outdoor Truck Series driver, Anthony Alfredo. Anthony, welcome to the show tonight. I appreciate you guys having me and I'm glad, I'm glad we could take you along and bring you inside the race shop. This is actually pretty cool. I will have to say that this is our first race face spotlight from actually inside a shop and there's one thing that we didn't have to do and that's bring lights yeah it worked out we got these new led lights installed that worked out perfect for us it sure did so anthony let's just get right into this i mean big weekend last weekend you were at atlanta motor speedway for your truck debut uh, give us your overall uh, ideas on, on basically what happened and how successful that was for you yeah it was definitely a, a great start to the year and a successful debut in the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series for me. I've known Rod quite a while and it feels like just yesterday I was racing late models and we were talking about events coming up in those days and now we're planning events at one of the national levels so it's pretty crazy and it was a surreal experience it still is surreal after the fact and we ended up 17th but we were ra racing inside the top 10 and got shuffled back on a late race restart just because the truck in front of me didn't get going but that's all part of the learning curve and things you got to deal with as a race car driver and in these races there's really nothing else I could do without getting a penalty for passing before the line so I learned a lot we also didn't get to qualify due to the rain so the 17 truck I was in actually had hardly any owner's points so we had to start 27th which all in all everything happens for a reason and I think was a good thing because I got to learn a lot about working my way through traffic and getting towards the front of the field which we had top five lap times all night and that's to Kyle Busch and a couple other experienced former champions. So definitely a successful night to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a crazy, a crazy weekend if you stop and think about it. Um, I'm not sure that there's a tougher track that you could go to to actually do your debut than Atlanta. I mean, the track is fast. It's rough. It's got seams. It's got new seams. And then on top of all that, we rolled in a whole bunch of fog. Then we, we misted rain for the whole day. Like you said, qualifying was rained out. That was a bummer. And, and for me, and, and excuse me for if there's any NASCAR officials or NASCAR people watching this thing, but I don't understand why you all restarted that race. Because again, you're sitting in 10th, you're sitting on pit road, the, front, the race is red flagged. You were sitting there probably for a good 20, 25 minutes up until the point that most teams were kind of like packing up their stuff and headed back to yeah. the haulers. And then all of a sudden it's kind of like, oh, we're going to go back to green. And I'm sitting there going, I, I really didn't kind of get that because to me, um, and you guys have to take those trucks to Vegas. Yeah. So you're sitting there with the opportunity, with, with the chance, I should say, not the opportunity, but a chance of going down into turn one or turn turn three and piling those trucks up, which would have not been a good thing. But like you said, you had a truck that, uh, that kind of spun the tires. I'm gathering that's probably what happened. And you guys checked up. But overall, I mean, you have to be totally excited. I know I talked to David Gillen, uh, your boss, the team owner and everything right after the race. And he had a big old smile on his face because he was like, let me tell you what, he did awesome for his first time there. And again, to be at a tough track like Atlanta. Yeah, it, it makes me smile just hearing that and, and hearing the compliments from my guys and the, everybody on the crew and coming back here to the shop. A lot of people walking by and tell me I did a good job, which obviously goes a long way because a lot of these guys are reserved and they just want to go out and win races every week. So when you finish 17th and they tell you you did a good job and there is nothing else you could really do at the end of the race means, you know, you did all you could and to have people acknowledge that is good, especially for your first race. So it was a big confidence builder for myself, obviously, but along with the crew guys, because if they had what David told me was if they had some confidence in me going to Atlanta, they have 10 times the confidence in me now, which meant a lot to me hearing that from a f former Cup Series driver who I've always looked up to. And obviously, now that I've been able to prove myself to my crew, we all kind of know where we stand going into the following races and this weekend at Las Vegas. Yeah, it was exciting for me. I was getting high five by crew members, and I don't even know who they were. So it was kind of cool. But I, I, I just sitting there watching you go through the race, it was kind of like, you know, the longer the race went, the faster you got, you you were from the, from the times that I was seeing and actually watching you on the monitors, um, you were you had a long run truck, mm -hmm. and and you just we could just see you as a as the race progressed, you would you'd be like, well, I'm gonna move up a little bit more, I'm gonna move up a little bit more, and and there for a while, I mean, 
you look like Kyle Larson out there. You were running the high line, man. You were right off the wall. And I know we talked a little bit before the race, and you're like, you know, I don't know if I'm really going to go up there. We'll just kind of have to see how the race was. But I think once you got up there, you're just like, man, this is the fast way around here. And uh, like I said, what an awesome job. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So now, fast forward just really, what, six days, and you're getting ready to head to Las Vegas Motor Speedway tomorrow to another fast track. And so what are your what are your expectations of going out there? Are you a little bit more comfortable uh, going there now that this is the second race and you got that first one kind of out of your way a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said before about knowing where we all stand as a team, myself, the crew guys, and being comfortable on pit road because I've never done live pit stops and obviously just the high speeds and the way the trucks handle and traffic there's so much that goes into it and compared to Atlanta from what I hear Las Vegas is way easier because it's smooth it's a repave it's got a lot of grip and I was able to test there too in the simulator about a month ago and I did both tracks and the difference between the two was insane and it's actually felt a lot easier in the simulator so we'll see how it is in real life but I'm looking forward to it because it as, f as far as a fan perspective, was arguably the best race of the year last year for the truck series because you run three, four wide around Absolutely. there all the way around. So it's going to be it's going to be pretty crazy, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. And like you said, now that I have that first race experience and the amount I, I learned, I can apply this weekend. And from what David and the guys told me, Atlanta is probably the hardest mile and a half on the schedule. So everywhere, not even just Las Vegas, but everywhere else we go throughout the remainder of the season, I should have a little bit of a little bit more confidence and a step forward. Yeah. And I know, I think it's not only your confidence level, but I also think like the old veterans out there, like you said, Kyle Busch, Matt Crafton, and a bunch of a host of other ones have got to have confidence to run around you and you know anytime you put that like that yellow stripe on the back of your bumper that's almost like a caution light but I think you overcame that well and you, you mentioned something else that, that actually impressed me a lot at that track and that was your pit stops you know I mean every pit stop you were right on the mark you never were too close to the wall you were right on and again I mean I, I was watching crew members coming off of that and it's like gosh he's got this thing down pat so that's a big deal because a lot of people struggle with pit stops when you haven't done it a lot. Yeah, I was nervous about them for sure. And that first one, I came down and I'm like, oh, that was, I think I did pretty well on that one. It felt pretty good. And and after the race, you know, like you said, everyone after that, I, I felt very consistent. And after the race, I asked the guys, I said, you know, we were talking about the finish of the race. I said, well, what could I have done? They're like, well, really nothing because the truck spun his tires. And if you pass him, you would have got a penalty. So all you could do is lift. And they just ate me up because of the momentum. But there's nothing else you can do. And then I said, well, what about pit road? And they said, not, not much. You were pretty perfect all night long. So maybe just fine tuning a couple things like getting in a little bit faster, but they'd rather me be a little bit conservative than blow through my stall or something in the first race is the last thing you want to happen. So I think we're ready to start pushing the limits a little bit more this weekend. Absolutely. I, I, I wish I was going out there this weekend to be able to see you because I think you're going to have a great race. And, and like you said, um, pretty much guaranteed that you're going to get a qualify. So you're not going to be starting back at 27th. But, you know, for, for Anthony, you've got a lot of stuff going on off the track i'm not sure that i know of any other driver that's doing a lot of the things that you're doing i know that you're doing racing with fans which is really pretty cool and then you've got beyond the helmet and i think you got something new coming up but talk to us a little bit about racing with fans and what that's all about and what kind of reaction you've been getting from the fans on that yeah so racing with fans is actually a series i started that i live stream on twitch which is on NASCAR Heat video games for Xbox One as well as iRacing. So not everybody can afford an iRacing setup or steering wheel pedals or have the ability to do that. So that's why I did do it on Xbox One with the NASCAR games as well. And it's really cool because I'm a big gamer and I love playing video games. So I said, hey, why don't I play with my fans and, and obviously live stream it because I began the whole live streaming uh, community, gotten into that. So it's a really cool way for me to engage with my fans, but also just have fun. It's not even so much just about the series and something I feel obligated to do. I do it because it's fun and we genuinely have a great time. So anybody's welcome to participate and we have, a, a like I said, a great time doing that. So somebody that would want to participate in racing with fans, how do they, how do they let you know that they want to do that? What should they do? 
So typically, if you follow me on social media, I always post the week of the event. And if you don't already know about it and you see that post, all you have to do is shoot me a direct message. Or if you already see this and you want to, just direct message me on any of my social medias and I'll send you the rules or what you need to participate. And pretty much we go from there. You just join in on, on at the time it starts and we all just race against each other. So it's, it's really cool. And like I said, it's a lot of fun. Some of the time I get beat up by my fans on, on especially NASCAR heat. That is some of these guys are like professionals in that, but it's a lot of fun and, and we have a great time. I know that we've got a couple of the other uh, race face drivers like Justin Sokol. He loves to race for you. And every time he's racing, he's always texting me going, oh my gosh, I'm racing with Anthony. And that's really cool if you stop and think about it. I mean, for, you know, a, a, a typical fan that's out there, I mean, how often do they get to compete against a driver who's running in one of the top three national series? It, it's very sell them and, and not only that here are you here at dgr now but you know you race for for dale jr motorsports you got a big fan following from that so i just think hats off to you i think that racing for fans is a very cool thing so now let's fast forward and let's talk a little bit about beyond the helmet so beyond the helmet now is a different series of mine which that's actually airs on my youtube channel anthony alfredo and that's all behind the scenes, who I am away from the racetrack. And sometimes it is a little bit racing related, kind of just what my what the day in the life of a NASCAR driver is, or even just part-time NASCAR driver, part-time college student, or I guess I should say full-time college student, full-time NASCAR <laughs> driver, because it's both really, but just day in the life vlogs. And I'm kind of transitioning to just some different videos from there as well. But it's really cool just because a lot of people are interested to see what I do in my daily routine or, or just how my day goes, how I balance school and racing. And I'm able to do that through the Beyond the Helmet series. Now, <clears throat> I've kind of been around you, like you said, we've been around each other for a couple of years. And I always know you as Fast Pasta. Now, but over the weekend, the Fox Sports team kind of gave you a new nickname. So which one's going to stick? Is it going to be Sauce or is it going to be Fast Pasta? I don't know. Technically, sauce makes more sense because that is what Alfredo is. It's Alfredo sauce, but Fast Pasta has been around since the late model days, so I'm not sure. I feel like I outgrew that one. I wasn't expecting a new one. I definitely didn't predict that heading into Atlanta, but hey, if it's for, if it's all just for fun and games and it's getting, getting us good exposure, then can't complain. I think it's funny, and I'll, I'll roll along with it. Yeah, so here's what we're doing. Maybe we should do like a Facebook post or something that says, help us vote. You know, are we going to be fast pasta or are we going to be sauce? Now, you've got some other things going on. You've got some new clothing line coming out. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I posted a sneak peek at some of our new merchandise that's releasing very soon, like probably a couple weeks soon. And there's going to be hats, shirts, sweatshirts, all this stuff. And one of the shirts in particular that's my favorite actually has one of my emoticons from my Twitch channel that subscribers get to use. And it's a picture, a cartoon version of me eating a bowl of fettuccine Alfredo. So it's hilarious and it's really cool. And I definitely think that's the one most everybody's excited to, to get once it releases. Yeah, so there you've got it. I mean, all kinds of things going on in the life of Anthony Alfredo. Anything new that you got coming out that we don't know about yet? Yeah, so a third series of mine right now, which may be the limit because I almost don't have time for all these with school end on race weeks, but that's going to be iRacing Road to a Class A, which what that's going to be exactly is starting from scratch in iRacing, uh, rookie level, and getting all the way to a Class A rank license, which is obviously the professional level. So I don't know if we'll get out of B class. B class might be my cap because I heard the race class A is a full-time job and I definitely don't have time for another one of those right now, but it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a cool journey for people to watch me race virtually because it's, it's way different than real life. And I do live stream a lot of iRacing events and people seem to enjoy that too because it's, it's kind of like watching me on an in-car camera, but just race virtually with either fans or in actual ranked events. So you've got a flight leaving out of here, I think it's seven o'clock in the morning, uh, getting to the big, to the, you know, the, the state of lights and glimmer being in Las Vegas. Um, you got any other plans besides just going to the racetrack while you're out in Vegas? Uh, I'm not sure if I'll have time for much more. I've got a lot of college work I got to bring along with me and do, unfortunately, and edit some YouTube videos for all my subscribers on there. But like you said, I got a lot going on, a lot of fun things that I love to share with you all, and I would do as much as I can. And like I said, that, that third series coming out is probably going to be as much as I can do, but you all enjoy it, and I appreciate all the support. Yeah, so top five finish, you jump off the stratosphere? 
We'll see. We'll consider it. Let's hope not. <laughs> I hope you get the top five. I don't want to see you jumping off the stratosphere. So, everybody, you know, uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. Make sure to watch the race. I believe it's uh, live on FS1. I think it comes on at 9 o'clock Eastern time um, on Saturday night? Friday night. Friday night. Okay, Friday night. Um, root for Anthony Alfredo. Follow him on all of his social media. You want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to thank everybody who makes all this possible. Obviously, Rod and everyone at Raceface Brand Development, all my marketing partners, Seco Building Systems, Oxford Energy Group, Mechanic Shop North, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, JDRF, and my parents, family, and all my supporters who get us to the racetrack each week and are pulling for us. Yeah, you can, if you want to help out the Friends of Jacqueline thing, you can actually go to Anthony's website, anthonyalfredo.com. You can click on Racing with a Cause, and you can find out everything there is to know about Friends of Jacqueline if you want to donate to kind of help mm -hmm. the cause. If you're not familiar with Friends of Jacqueline, Friends of Jacqueline is all about supporting kids that are battling pediatric brain tumors or other t forms of childhood cancer. And we kind of make a whole day out of it. Anthony's going to be adopting a child, basically, uh, to where he's going to be supporting that child, not just for one day, but for as long as that child and that family needs support. It's a great cause. Go to his website and check it out. And we want to thank all of you for tuning in to Race Face Spotlight. Um, as always, I encourage you to go out and support local racing in your community. Become an Anthony Alfredo fan. Check out his Facebook page. Check out his Instagram Follow him on all of his different types of social medias, and then you can get all that information at anthonyalfredoracing.com. Anthony, good luck this weekend, and thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me.